Hey guys, I'm Rich from NeoWin. Today we're unboxing the Huawei MateBook 13. So this is a pretty cool device, uh, but it's supposed to be a mainstream device. And it's even though it's kind of specced and built like a premium PC, but Huawei has their own premium PCs and it's a little bit confusing. So let's just break this down a little bit because I have a few right here. This is the original Huawei MateBook. Um, it was introduced about two and a half years ago. It was, it was Huawei's first entry into the Windows 10 PC market. And it's a tablet. Um, got a folio keyboard. This was sold separately. There's the Mate Dock. And the tablet itself, um, sixth generation Core M3, M5, nothing really special. Some performance issues because those uh, those Core M chips were not great. Uh, so the next, the next generation, what they did, <laughs> um, the successor to that was the MateBook E, but they also introduced the MateBook X and the MateBook D. So the MateBook X is the premium. It was a 13-inch laptop, didn't have touch, 7th um, gen Core i processors, uh, Dolby Atmos, super premium stuff. It was so thin and light. It's a wonderful device. And, and then the MateBook D, which has been refreshed since, which I have right here, the AMD one that I reviewed. Um, it's got an AMD Ryzen. This is more, uh, I guess you're calling it a mid-range. I would have called it mainstream up until this came out. So there's that. And then they did the MateBook X Pro which I also have here. So uh, the MateBook X Pro has a larger screen, 14 inches. Uh, the MateBook D had a larger screen also at 15.6, but this one is 14 inches. Uh, like I said, it's a little confusing and they're all clamshell clamshells except for the MateBook E tablet. So this is also a clamshell. Um, I asked them why they didn't do a convertible. I guess they just, um, they're just not interested in the form factor right now. Um, but the MateBook X Pro, back to that, um, you know, better screen. The, it has that privacy uh, camera that's hidden in the keyboard. It's going to be right here that pops up. There's your webcam. All right. And, um, you know, dedicated graphics. So here's the thing, though. This this has 8th uh, gener generation KB Lake R processors. The MateBook X still hasn't been refreshed. It's still 7th gen dual core uh, but they're all 15 watt processors. So when this competes with the MacBook Air, the fact that it has an actual 15 watt processor is a big deal because the MacBook Air has a seven watt processor, which is along those, uh, the Intel Y series, although it's a little stronger than, than a standard Y. The standard Y series is five watts. So this is a little better, although it's labeled as Y series. So that's the rebranded Core M that Intel has. So you notice this doesn't come in a fancy box. This comes in a, a pretty basic um, cardboard box. And I guess um, that's maybe a cost cutting measure. The other the other MateBooks that I've used do come in a much more pretty consumer friendly box. All right. So yeah, pretty basic. Is there anything else in here? There's gotta be a charge. Oh, all the way on the side here. All right, we have here's our Huawei charger, a USB Type-C to Type-C cable, um, the power brick, which doesn't say exactly what the wattage is on here. It's probably around 45 or 65 watts, whatever. Um, so what's interesting to me is that it doesn't come with the Mate Dock. I was told that it would come with the Mate Dock 2.0, which was what was introduced with the MateBook X and, and that whole lineup. All right, so let's get this thing open. Um, like I said, it's, it's, it's definitely a MacBook Air competitor. And, and I don't like calling Windows PCs that because really they're competing with other Windows PCs. So this is it, it's got the Huawei logo. It's a beautiful machine. Okay, over here we have one Type-C port, uh, 3.5 millimeter audio jack, um, another Type-C port over here, and um, no USB Type-A. And that's why I was so surprised that there's no Mate Dock because I was told that there would be one because there's no Type-A. But we can see it is, it's much thicker and it's, it's much heavier than the MateBook X. That is not to say that this is thick or heavy. This is actually quite thin and light. So for, for a device that's not meant to be premium, it's actually pretty premium. This is a wonderful device. So we have a little piece of plastic protecting the keys here. So we can take a little bit of a closer look here. Um, we can see about a 1.3 millimeter keyboard, large trackpad. Okay, it's um, it's a... Um, it's, it feels pretty premium to me. Uh, narrow black bezels, which kind of uh, fits in with that MacBook Air design. You can almost feel like you're looking at a MacBook Air if you look uh, from the inside. Um, another thing is the fingerprint reader, which I just want to call out. This thing is lovely. 
Okay, um, I don't, I know it's a weird thing to to call out on a, a um, on a video, but it's actually a really good fingerprint reader. So what it does is it actually scans your fingerprint when you turn on the device. Um, versus other machines where you actually have to turn on the device and then you have to scan it again, even though the fingerprint reader is built into the power button. So Dell does something like that. And it's interesting because both companies have different theories about this. Dell says that uh, it's a security risk because it takes too long to boot up Windows. So certain, and something over a certain amount of time, say five seconds. So say... Um, if it takes seven seconds to boot up Windows, um, that's too long and it's a security risk because you might go to turn on your PC and you might walk away and then if it automatically logs you in, then you're at risk. Um, on the other hand, this is super convenient. And what's the point of building a fingerprint reader into the power button if you can't use it for that exact purpose? Um, if you ask me, um, everybody might have different opinions on that, but if you want it to automatically log you in, that option is here. Okay, so uh, no bloatware, this is a signature PC. Uh, it doesn't even have McAfee antivirus on it, which is fantastic. Uh, it has some Huawei software, PC manager, that's where you can go to update your drivers and such. Uh, you should also be able to use it to like uh, sync text messages with, with your Huawei phone. Uh, my services, I don't see it, but you've been able to do that with this app previously. So another thing, i7-8565 CPU. So, like I said, this has premium specs and it actually has better specs than um, the ones that are actually supposed to be premium, which is just weird to me. By the way, another thing, the display, 2160 by 1440. So that's QHD 3 by 2. Okay, um, so yeah, i7-8565, that's Whiskey Lake. So Whiskey Lake is the 15 watt processors that's kind of intel's second generation eighth generation chips so like so like i said the matebook x has not been refreshed past seventh gen the matebook x pro is still on kb lake r which is like the first gen eighth gen uh chips it's weird the u series the standard u series chips are 15 watts uh, but we've just got two generations of them with the with the eighth generation u series so um the matebook x pro is using KB Lake R, the MateBook X is using KB Lake, this is using Whiskey Lake. So this has kind of the best CPUs of anything that Huawei offers right now. So um, it's just a little peculiar to me. This model also has dedicated graphics. Not the best dedicated graphics. NVIDIA GeForce MX150 with two gigabytes GDDR5, and that's fine. Uh, for, for a device like this, again, very thin and light. You know, this is Ultrabook type of power here so this is a productivity machine you could use it for more that dedicated graphics is better than just integrated graphics so that's a big deal um not all models come with the dedicated graphics is optional there's only two models this is something that huawei does and um there's not a lot of customization offered so the base model is 999 has a core i5 uh, 8265u whiskey lake core i5 uh, 8 gigs of ram 256 gigs of storage and integrated graphics. So this one has the Core i7, 8565U, uh, eight gigs of RAM also, uh, 512 gigs of storage, and the dedicated graphics. So the one big difference between this and the MateBook X Pro is that the MateBook X Pro is offered with 16 gigs of RAM. Uh, they both have quad-core processors, although the CPU in this one's a little better. Um, I just kind of, I you know, I've asked them if they were gonna refresh these other machines, and they said yes, but also, when the MateBook X Pro came out, I asked them if they were going to refresh the MateBook X, and they said yes, and they haven't. And one more thing about this device is that it's it's sold at Amazon, Newegg, and Microsoft. Both models should be sold at each. Um, interestingly, um, you may have heard that there are some issues with, with some concerns with Huawei products. Um, I don't want to go into whether I believe them or not. This is not what this video is about. Uh, but you won't find Huawei phones on the Microsoft Store. Like the Mate 10 last year was supposed to be sold on the Microsoft Store and then Microsoft pulled back because of those concerns. Um, the PCs are still sold anywhere where you'd expect PCs to be sold. Um, and I believe the reason for that is because the phones use Huawei CPUs, Huawei, Huawei chipsets, Huawei uh, LTE modems, 
And these are you most. This is mostly using off-the-shelf parts, right? We have an Intel processor, NVIDIA GPU. There's no custom Huawei chipset in there. So the PCs you can find anywhere. You will be able to buy this in the United States. It's not an issue. So it's a little, it's a little strange. I think this is a wonderful machine, though. Talking just talking about the MateBook 13. Um, this is a wonderful machine, and, and if it didn't sit side by side with the higher end models, I th I, this would feel premium. So, I mean, talking about the price difference between the base model and the higher end model, I think it's totally worth it to go for twelve ninety nine for um, the better processor, twice as much storage. I mean, seriously, two fifty six gigs of storage is not a lot, but five twelve is, and also the dedicated graphics. So. $300 for, for those upgrades, it's pretty good. And um, like I said, Huawei does not offer a lot of customizations. Um, usually these PCs come in two colors and one model comes in one color, the other model comes in another color. So if you like silver, but you want the higher end model, you out of luck, you know? But um, yeah, I can't wait to review this. I wish they sent me a mate dock with it. Um, I do have mate docks from, from other review units, but I just, uh, it does feel like something that should be included on a device like this. It might just be because it's a review unit, so I will reach out to them and I'll see uh, exactly what comes in the retail packaging. If this was the retail packaging, who knows? Um, so I'll have more on that in a few weeks, so stay tuned for that. I'm Richard Neowin. Have a great night.